top of those pieces. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Ace, and welcome you back to my YouTube channel. Uh, earlier today, I was actually going through my Twitter and I realized uh, I had a couple of interesting questions on my previous app, some of which were tech focused, and I decided to like, answer them again on video and see if they can be useful to as many people as possible. Um, I'll be jumping right into it now, so let's go. So, to get started, um, how do you learn new stuff? Oh, uh, well. Let's see. When, I, when there's something for me to learn, like uh, probably a new tool or a new technology and other stuff, I kind of like make it uh, just a good name, say React, for example, just put React. Uh, we can find uh, the getting started tutorial or some kind of like crash call or something to get you started as fast as possible. Or you actually go to the documentation itself and just came to us also. So normally you want to find out how to install it first and have it set up. Especially when you know what it's going to do, and then just for me personally, I just dive right into it and see if I encounter any problem or if it's quite difficult to learn. So it's probably something that is very unique to a specific need. I just um, come up with an idea for what I want to use it for, and then just jump right into it. Oh, I want to build an app, for example, in Android. I just say, oh, actually, I can just Google how to um, start an Android app. Android Studio, you see the instructions and get into it. And I just, you know, just get started. And over time, how do, want, how do I want to connect multiple pages? I Google it. I learn how to connect multiple pages and I learn how to actually do stuff. Uh, but then, once you're able to actually learn this way and you've been able to jump and do this together, you already have like a fundamental knowledge or basic knowledge of how this tool works. This is, you know, in, you see that since you've had a little bit of experience in using it. And then you can now look into more in depth and more uh, concrete parts of the program for you to easily learn and go from it. So, how do I learn new stuff? I jump right into it, come up with an idea that I might be able to use it for, and then just go. Uh, next thing, what's my favorite programming language? Uh, I wouldn't say I have a favorite programming language because it usually depends on what I want to build, or uh, um, what platform I want to build for, or all this kind of related stuff. But uh, I mostly use PHP or JavaScript. PHP mostly because of Laravel, I love Laravel, so I'll just go and say PHP probably because PHP is my most used uh, language so far, but then JavaScript is just right behind it. Yeah, next, how long have you been coding? Uh, I started learning how to code in January 2012 after I saw some of my friends coding, I'm like, oh my god, what are you guys doing, what are you writing on, what are you creating from this, like, it was all magic. So from there, I also witnessed an exhibition where some guys showcase the products that they build and I was like, nah, this is this is insane. Is it from that jargon they write in order to create something as useful as and wonderful as this? So I just started learning how to code there. I started HTML, went to Java, I didn't understand Java and all this stuff. But say professionally, I think I probably started say 2014. And I was like, and I think that's when I had my internship at the Thursday ND. Uh next one, what do you advise an aspiring programmer? Pursue your dream before uni, or uni then pursue your dream. Um, I think if you are lucky enough to already know what programming is before you get into school, I don't see why you should not go to school. Personally, for me, I had I was very into computer yet yeah, as I studied computer science, but I had no idea what programming was, what web development was. I had no idea to actually go to school. I saw some of my friends doing it. But if you already have an understanding before you get to school, I think the best thing for you to do is still to go to school. Because it gives you four years or more or five, based on your course, to actually have time for yourself with as little responsibility as possible while going through um, a lot of student uh, discounts or advantages or even accommodation. Because if you are staying in hostel, it's way cheaper than if you are living on your own by not going to school and you're trying to get, uh, just trying to get by. So I recommend you go to school, not just for the fact that you have a, a period of time to grow as much as possible in your career while also getting better in as many things as possible that might interest you. So going to school, it's like a bonus for me, in my opinion. Uh, you go to school, you learn the course. If you're studying computer science, awesome. If you're not, I'm sure you might still be able to uh, make it work. So if you're still in school, I would advise you just try and balance everything. You can apply to ambassador programs. You have the IC, that's the University Campus Ambassador Program. I think we used to have Microsoft and Google and others then at that time. 
So you can apply to ambassador program, you can apply to uh, to get discounts from using your student's email accounts. You can get so many tools for free that you won't normally get if you're not in school. And all these tools will just um, accumulate to make you better developer, programmer, designer, or whatever. So if you're still in school or if you're about to get into school and you're already knowledgeable about programming and all that stuff, I would recommend you to go ahead to school and finish it. Take advantage of everything that comes your way as a student and just, you know, be as good as you can be when you finally leave school and then just take over the world and issue up. Um, common challenges you faced as a novice programmer. Uh, let's see. So for me, I think at that time, I wasn't really into community. I didn't even know there was anything like any community existing anywhere. So I had a little bit of, I was like everywhere. I was doing Java, I was doing C Sharp, I was doing Visual Basic, I was doing HTML, CSS, blah, blah. I was doing um, PHP. Uh, I think I was in C++. I was just like everywhere. I was building Android. <laughs> Anything I needed to do, like, I just had one crazy idea. I just jumped right into it and like. So I was like touching base everywhere, and I didn't really have a defined career path or a defined okay. I want to specialize in this early enough in my career. I spent a lot of time just dabbing and touching and just building random shit. So um, if uh, at this stage though, there are like a lot of communities that have been able to a lot of resources even online. That have been able to guide you to say if you're coming to program me this way, you can do this, do this, do that. But for me at that time, it was a closed environment for me, so I really did not have direction. I was just like everywhere. So those are one of the things I struggle with as a, a, a novice programmer. Are you a front end dev or a back end dev? So most of my life I've been like back end, but I'm also I learned design by started coding, so I kind of like have. A lot of affinity for front end. So uh, right now, actually, I'm working on my front end skills. You know, I need to be badass. Uh, but primarily, I'm a back end developer. I built projects end to end, like full stack program. But I don't like saying full stack anymore because like, if it's full, then it requires all these DevOps and all this bitch. I'm not so good at that. But yeah, uh, I do back end mostly. I'm, I can do front end as well. I'm good with my CSS. I can do stuff. Uh, so yeah, uh, front end and back end both. But primarily back end. Uh, so next, tabs or spaces. <laughs> so um, this is actually a very curious question. I've seen a lot of people, I think most people actually miss uh, the questions here because they press the tab key on the keyboard. Um, so the thing about this is that I think I was discussing with Neo Igodaro at one time. And then is, there's the tab character and there's spaces. So you could be two spaces, you could be four spaces. Uh, most most uh, code editors, once you press tab, actually give you four spaces. While others, probably Vim, I'm not so sure, when you press tab, it uses the tab character. So it's like one character, but it's tab. While other code editors give you uh, four spaces when you press tab. So when people say tab about spaces, most people do not really realize this. Uh, I think this video should clear that up. So once, as long as your code editor is using spaces, you can check the preferences and see how many spaces it uses. You find out that you guys are actually using spaces most of the time are not tabs. So do not kill yourself, do not break up, don't end your relationship because of tabs or spaces arguments. It's usually hilarious because most of us actually use spaces and I'm cool with it. As long as I press my tab, which is one button, and give me four spaces. Uh, it is also known that the tab character has like different formatting on different um, platforms, could be Windows or, uh, or Mac, etc. So it might affect the formatting of your code. Not ahead, I'm not so sure, I haven't really used it. But I personally go with spaces because it's what most people do. But I did not press my spaces like pa 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 pa. I just press the tab and send it to four spaces. So that's it. Uh, what next? What can you advise the people that really want to learn how to code? Uh, my advice is simple actually. Um, there are a lot of communities you can Google, checkmeetup.com, a lot of them. But I think the first thing is to identify why you want to learn how to code. It could be for the money, it could be for the passion, it doesn't matter as long as you have a reason. Uh, and the second thing is to figure out um, what platform you want to build for. Are you a mobile guy? Do you want to build for mobile applications? Or do you want to build for the web? Or do you want to like go into AI or all this kind of hardware or anything at all? Like we have to be specific with what you want to learn. And uh, um, if you've been able to identify what platform you want to build for, then there are common tools, technologies, programming languages, etc., that are actually are focused on that platform. So you're looking to learn them. You can get uh, involved in any community that like so much right now. You can find anyone that is focused on that tool or technology and you just look into it. So um, right now, I think you, this is like, there's no better time. There are so many support systems, so many communities, so many resources to get you started with coding. So 
I'll just say, just start. Like, just get into it and I wish you guys all the best. When was the first time you spoke at a developer meetup? And how did you get the opportunity? Uh, so I think the first time I spoke at a developer meetup after coming back to Lagos was 2017. It was at Follow People Done. And uh, I think I was scrolling to Twitter that day, uh, that day and I saw um, Call for Papers. Oh, we're having Follow People Done this day, this day. Uh, if you have a topic, you can talk about this apply. I clicked the link, submitted my, um, my proposal for my talk. And I got accepted, and that was it. Like there was no, uh, how would I there was no background negotiation or anything of sorts. I saw the link, I applied, uh, and I think it was a good talk. I, th I think I gave a talk about open source at that time. In and it was just, it was really good. Uh, I traveled to Ibadan, I gave a talk, and it was very nice. Uh, I came back the same day. Yeah, came back the same day. Uh, it, was, it was real fun though. But like, just if if you want to start giving talks, just um. Find something that you find uh, interesting or a new tool, technology, or something that you've been working with, and just submit proposals. Uh, you can check um, papercall.io or even follow Twitter community pages where you know that an event is coming up. And even if an event is coming up and you've not seen a call for people, but you're interested in speaking there, you can just message the organizers or their official social media handles and see if they are open to you submitting a proposal for your talk. I'm a fourth year software development student. Do you have any project idea for me, please? Something that I can do and just to get a job. Uh, I think this question is so tied to my last two videos, which is what to do after tech boot camps and empty portfolios. What you know about it? In those two videos, I shared a link about um, five web projects. I can't believe I'm sharing this article three times <laughs> in three videos in a row. But uh, in those two videos, I also shared uh, the article that shows you five web projects that you can build just to get started with your coding journey and you can add it to your portfolio. So uh, you can watch the last video, empty portfolio, what you should do here. Yeah? Or you can also check out these five projects that you can just build before someone actually gives you a job. I used to make some money and get more jobs. Um, I feel like I've hit a wall as a coder. I have built stuff and I want to freelance. But I don't know how to convince people to give me small to medium projects. Any suggestions on how I can move forward? Uh, I think it's similar to the last question I just answered, but it's also a little bit different. Uh, I don't know how to convince people to give me small to medium projects. Any suggestions on how I can move forward? Um, I'll say first of all, you should people project uh, your portfolio. Um, once you have a portfolio, you can easily convince anyone that yes, you are able to deliver what they expect of you. But also finding people that are willing to give projects can be tough because then you need the right network and most people work uh, based off referrals. So I'll say you should you know, check out Dev Center Gibson. They love, um, Check out getdev.co, apply to them, should be able to get jobs to them. Um, I, don't, I can't think of any other one right now, but there's Dev Center Geekson, it's like a tool to um, get a freelance jobs or even full time job opportunities. Getdev.co that you can apply to to get jobs here uh, in Nigeria. So um, I think those two should, um, should work for you. Uh, I think that's everything. Um, I hope any of these questions are uh, interested you or you know, provide a solution to your questions possibly anything related uh if you are new to my channel don't forget to hit subscribe button and most importantly check out my previous videos for any that might be useful to you you can share with your friends that might need it as well you know drop a comment if you have any questions feedback or suggestions and i would really love to listen to you guys and reply uh hit the thumbs up and i'll see you in my next video cheers questions and answers might help so yes 10 questions So yes. So yes. Um. Naturally, once I have the need to learn something, I 